Well, okay then. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 6th episode of the show, Power Rangers Turbo, as well as the 211th episode overall titled Rally Ranger. We begin this episode at a rally car race where some dweeb is speeding down a hill. Get ready for a real thrill this week, everyone. We see that this kid in black is racing against a boy in blue who is clearly Justin. Then he tries to get Justin away by slamming into him, sending him off reeling. Cat and Adam are there running over. The car falls apart in the funniest way ever as Justin gets out. He's okay, but he's bummed about his car. This car is called True Blue, by the way, because Justin is terrible. The kid in black has taken the trial run, and Justin is worried that he'll never be able to get it fixed by the derby race tomorrow. Cat and Adam say that they'll help, but that's actually against the rules. I have a tough time believing no one's parents helped them out building their race cars. The kid in black comes up, and we learn that his name is Warren, and Justin asks why he did that even during a practice one, which is a fair question. Warren claims that every race counts, and he counts Justin out, telling him to give up because he doesn't fit in and he's an egghead. I'm sorry, but egghead is like the worst insult ever. It's not like the kid is Dr. Robotnik. Cat and Adam tell Justin to just ignore Warren, but Justin actually agrees with his insults. I feel like they could have stepped in more there. Underwater, Elgar walks onto the ship with a surfboard. Apparently that's what he's been doing. Deotox demands a detonator from Porto who gives excuses at first, but then she yells at him to hurry. Elgar even comes up to tell him to shut up and just do his job. Porto is sick of wasting his superior intellect on this team, so he plans to go AWOL. At the garage, Justin wheels in his piece of crap car, and Tommy talks about how Justin had a rough day. Then he tries to be fatherly by kneeling down and telling Justin to not let Warren get to him. Justin explains that sometimes he wishes he wasn't so smart because then it'd actually be easier for him. Tommy says that he should be proud of his intelligence because the other ranger thinks it's super cool, and it actually makes him really special. This would actually be really nice if Tommy wasn't kneeling down like he's talking to a toddler instead of a comrade in the war against evil. Back on the ship, everyone is sleeping, and Porto is sneaking out with a torpedo attached to his back. In the morning, Justin is asleep on the floor of the garage, and his race car is covered up. The other four rangers are there, watching him sleep like four weird parents. I'm sorry, but why did the rangers adopt this child again? They talk about him like he's a literal baby. Justin wakes up, and he asks what time it is, and they talk about how it's his big day. Tanya asks what the prognosis on True Blue is, and Justin explains that he got permission to work on it all night, like it wasn't just Tommy who let him stay in his garage. Actually, that's a good question. Who the hell owns his garage? Is it Tommy's uncles? I've just been assuming that. Long story short, uh, Justin did it. The car is fine. They're all so shocked he built it in one night. Like that thing didn't just come made from the prop department at 15 minutes tops. The first one probably didn't even crash. That's probably just what happened that day on set. Underwater, Divatox is waking up Rygog and Elgar, asking where Porto is, and they realize that he's gone rogue. Elgar has a funny line about how Porto could have been abducted by aliens, but then he realizes that they are the aliens. Divatox needs him to fix the detonator, and Elgar volunteers to do it, begging. Divatox finally caves, letting him plant the bomb and destroy the racetrack. At the race, people are going, and this bitch is handing out smoothies. At the start line, all the rangers come up, talking about a whole lot of nothing. Stone is the announcer at the race, and he's with the monkeys because dude has attachment issues. Of course, Bulk and Skull decide that they should be in the race, because if they win, the Power Rangers will turn them back into humans. What? Stone then tells the monkeys to shut the fuck up because he brought them out for fresh air, insinuating that they're usually in a cage in a basement somewhere. He also says that he'll put them back on banana peeling duty, which is definitely a health code violation. Elgar appears at the track somehow completely unnoticed to anyone, and he decides to plant the bomb in Warren's car, putting it on the back. Good, kill that kid. We don't need him. Warren comes up to Justin, mocking him. This isn't the content I signed up for, Power Rangers. Two 12-year-olds talking smack to one another. Justin tries to tell him to have a good race and shake his hand, but Warren refuses. Porto then says that he's going to get the respect he deserves, and he uses the torpedo to make himself giant, rampaging through the city. Elgar arrives on the ship, celebrating that he planted the bomb correctly, and Divatox finds out that Porto is actually attacking the city. Justin's communicator goes off, and he tells Warren to leave him alone, and they hear that all the racers need to come to the starting line. The other rangers come up, telling him what's going on, and Justin complains that he's about to miss his race. On the ship, Deep Talks wants Porto to come home, but Elgar is too busy fighting a giant fish that's coming in through the submarine window. I love Elgar. The Rangers take their race carts into the battle to confront Porto, firing at him with their auto blasters. Justin should have just been at the derby. They fire at him again, and Porto hits a billboard down at them. They call it the Ram Cannon, which I guess is actually not destroyed from Episode 3, and they get their individual weapons out. Tommy just jumps on top of Porto while the others fire at him, and Tanya punches his feet. Then she gets kicked in the face away while Porto grabs Tommy, throwing him onto the ground. Call out your damn zords. At the race, Warren gloats, and we see that he has 14 seconds left before his ass literally explodes. The race starts, and now he's down to a single second, and the explosion goes off. For some reason, the explosion is making him just lose control of his car, which makes zero sense whatsoever. He should be in pieces. He tries to brake, but then it just breaks off in half, 
so Warren is going to slowly roll into a tree or something. Elgar sees that this happened on the periscope, talking about how the detonator was defective because it didn't make it rain with the kid's guts. The rangers have formed the turbo ram cannon, firing at Porto who deflects it with his butt. Seriously. Elgar says he's got Porto's coordinates and Divatox wants to bring him back, so Porto shrinks and then he gets sucked up a teleportation hole leaving. Justin then stupidly says that maybe he can get back in time for the race. Like, the race wasn't starting 30 minutes ago. The rangers leave. Meanwhile, Warren is still going. The rangers show up hearing what's happening and Justin decides it's time to break out True Blue. He rolls down the hill to try to save Warren and wow, this is the most boring thing I think I've ever seen. This is pretty impressive by Power Ranger standards. I mean, I don't know how this show has been this terrible. Long story short, uh, Justin just breaks in front of Warren stopping him. I feel like someone could have just like put their foot out and stopped the car, but alright. Warren thanks Justin and Justin gaily puts his hand on Warren's arm. And thus Joran was born. On the ship, Porto wants to explain everything and Rygog says that according to the rulebook, Porto has to walk the plank. When he explains that this is a submarine, Divatox suggests that he holds his breath. Huh. In the end, Justin and Warren make up and maybe date when they're like 18 or something. I mean, they're gonna work on their racers together and want to learn a lot about each other. Then Stone tells everyone to freak out because there's someone on the track. It's Monkey Bulk and they run right into the giant smoothie stand which is somehow full of actual smoothie which pours out onto the woman who is working it. The two monkeys are there screaming about how they're bulk and skull. The woman asks if these monkeys are his, and he says yes. So she pours the world's like most watered down smoothie on his face, which bulk then licks off of him. This show's getting real gay. The end. This episode is like, rough. I mean, why are we constantly focusing on the 12 year old? I just don't understand what they were trying to go for with Justin. I feel like it could have been a new 16 year old kid who was just like a few years younger than the other rangers and it could have had the exact same effect. This is like a worse version of Big Bad Beetleborgs because they weren't even committed to the bit. Porto leaving actually feels like something Finster should have done at some point, but the villains actually lack the wick and the charm of the previous ones. Except for Elgar. Elgar's like carrying this whole show right now. So will next episode get any better? Please? Until then, may the power protect you.